to know how to craft a cup, a kuksa or a little bowl is a super fascinating and useful bushcraft skill. But even for such a simple design, I need several hours if I'm working outdoors and if I don't need power tools. That's why it's very annoying and frustrating if your workpiece gets cracks during the drying process. In this video, I show you six tricks how to reduce the risk of shrinkage cracks. Hello YouTube! Welcome to another project video. Do you know this bad feeling when you destroy your self-made bow direct on the first shot? <laughs> After many, many hours work? Oh yes, I know this feeling. And about the same feeling I had as my first cooks are cracked. That's why I want to show you some tricks how to reduce the risk of shrinkage cracks significantly. To be honest, I'm not really a cup carving pro. I made probably 20 cups or kuksas in my whole life. Some of them are here and only two of them are cracked. This one and this one. The positive thing is I know the reason why this happened. And this is super important to understand for your learning process. So let's jump to my tips. Tip number one. If you let dry a slice of a trunk like this, it will get cracks under normal conditions. This is because the wood shrinks the most in the direction of the tree rings in the sapwood. Normally it's a bad idea to place the cup like this, that the rim of the cup comes to stay on the end grain side. If you place your cup like this in the trunk, the risk is almost 100% that you get cracks during the drying process. And this is happened on this cup. Can you see the micro hairline cracks around the pith? or the crack in the wall. So this is not a good idea. But you will have also another problem if you place the cup like this in the trunk. As you can see in this microscopic cross-section picture from a piece of wood, the wood consists of millions of hollow fibers. And these fibers, they transport water. As you can see, I can blow through a piece of a branch. And that means also that the bottom of your cup is not really watertight. So I recommend that the fibers in the bottom of your cup are lying and not standing. Tip number two. If the whole circumference of a trunk has 100% tension when it dries. The half of the trunk should have 50% of tension and the quarter of the trunk should have 25% of the tension. What I want to tell you is that the diameter of the trunk slice should be as big as possible in relation to the size of the cup. So I recommend at least cut in half the trunk slice with which you want to make your cup. Or much better, make quarters like this you reduce the tension in the wood enormous. I guess this is the most important trick you have to know. The problem is, if you want to make a cup in a normal size out of such a quarter, the trunk has to have a big diameter. And especially in a bushcraft situation, you don't carry always a big saw with you where you are able to cut such a diameter. In this case, just harvest a smaller diameter, split it in half, and in my experience, this should be already enough that you don't get drying cracks in your workpiece. Please keep in mind that the pith is mostly not in the center of the trunk slice. That means if you split the trunk slice in half through the pith, you get a big half and a small half. So just take the big half to making a cup. Tip number three. Mostly, a shrinkage crack starts from the pith in the center and not from the outside. This is because during the drying process, in the center part around the pith, arise the biggest forces and the highest tensions. I recommend place your cup like this in the trunk, that you have at least two or three centimeters distance from the pith. This is another important tip to reduce the risk of shrinkage cracks. To give you an answer on the question, which is the better position from the cup in the trunk, like this 
or like this. It's not easy for me and I'm afraid that I have another opinion in all the cup carving pros in the world. But I give you an answer from the perspective of a bushcrafter who is somewhere outdoors and he tried to improvise a cup with only a few tools. In a bushcraft situation I recommend to place the cup in the trunk like this with the rim facing to the pith. Because during the drying process, in the area of the pith, you have, you have always the biggest and highest tensions and, and forces. And if the rim with the thin walls are facing to the pith, the walls can deform a little bit. The bottom cannot deform. The second reason is, if you place the cup like this, you can make the big cup out of the same piece. Then you place it like this. And like that you can harvest a smaller diameter and this is always an advantage if you are improvising with only a few small tools. Tip number four. Make sure that your raw material don't have any hairline cracks. If you harvest the trunk slice from the very end of a fellow tree who is already a little bit dried, the risk is high that you have hairline cracks in it. And these hairline cracks are that tiny that you almost can't see it. But in the further drying process, these hairline cracks will extend without resistance. And this was the problem on this cup. Can you see the cracks? Much better is harvest the piece somewhere from the middle from the trunk. Or at least 20 or 30 centimeters away from the very end. So this is much safer. Work always careful if you craft with an axe or with a net. Because when these tools penetrate into the wood, you create always big forces. And this can also be the reason that you start a hairline crack. Tip number five. If you are a beginner, don't start with a cooksa with a handle and a complicated shape. Start with a super simple cup like this. On a cup without the handle, the thickness of the walls are more or less equal. And an equal thickness of the walls of your cup helps to harmonize the drying process. Like this, you can avoid that your cup get tension cracks. And finally, tip number six. Let your workpiece dry slowly. Don't put it direct in the sun or don't dry it next to the fire. Much better is let your cup dry on a shadow place or put the cup into a paper bag or a cardboard box and fill it up with wood chips from the carving work. If you let your cup dry slowly, the wood has also the chance to deform a little bit instead of instantly building cracks. Another problem why your cup can crack, apart from the problems with the drying process, are the cold hot shocks. If you put boiling hot liquid into your cup, in the next video, I want to tell you something about this problem and I want to show you how I craft such a super simple cup with only a few tools. So my friends, I hope these tips was helpful for you. Please let me know in the comment section below if you are disagree with my tips or if you know other tips or if you have experience with this boiling in salt water thing. I never tried out this. So I would say that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you next Friday. Ciao!